Today's lesson reminds us to respond to God's faithfulness with expressions of praise and gratitude for who God is and what He has done for us and others. The Ark of the Covenant had been a mainstay in the spiritual lives of the children of Israel following their flight from Egypt. However, during the reign of King Saul, God's people had become disconnected from the Ark, which represented God's presence. David, upon capturing Jerusalem and making it the capital city of Israel, sought to cure this disconnection by reuniting the people with the Ark. And that brings us to our key verse for today, which reads, Then David summoned all Israel to Jerusalem to bring the Ark of the Lord to the place he had prepared for it. 1 Chronicles chapter 15, verse 3. David's preparation for returning the Ark included involving all the people of Israel in what we would call corporate worship. This was a momentous occasion. It symbolized the restoration of worship to the nation and victory over Israel's enemies. God had prospered the Levite, Obed-Edom, when the ark resided with him. David was certain that God would prosper the nation when this symbol of communion with God was restored to national prominence. Furthermore, God was not just the God of the leaders. He was the God of the nation. All the people were to participate and witness what was done in that day. Before the ark could be moved, the priests and Levites had to sanctify themselves. It was also critical that the ark be carried in a specific manner. David had seen firsthand what transgression of God's instructions meant. In this second attempt, the Levites followed God's instructions explicitly. According to the law, the ark was to be carried. It was to be laid upon the shoulders of the Levites as symbols of their carrying the worship of the Lord before the people. David's own ability as musician was well known, and his reign was marked by his devotion to God. The return of the ark must be accompanied by praises. The worship of God must be accompanied by music and singing, a joyful noise. The Israelites offered sacrifices to express their gratitude to God and to ask his blessing upon their nation as the ark was returned to prominence in the worship of the people. This voluntary gesture was made in accordance with the law for the sins of the people. A sacrifice of seven animals of each type was made. In scripture, the number seven refers to completeness and corresponds to the number of days in creation. The sacrifice, therefore, symbolized the complete atonement of the people, as they sought the complete forgiveness and presence of God in their nation and national affairs. The leaders followed strict guidelines even regarding attire. David, as well as the Levites, wore fine linen, and he also wore an aphod, or mantle of or outer garment. David was not attempting to step into the place of the priest. Rather, his attire represented him as the leader and a worshiper who had donned the finest vestments in this celebration of restoration. Interestingly, it is this aphod that David is famous for having danced out of, earning the scorn of his wife Michal, Saul's daughter. The procession of the ark into the city of Jerusalem took three days. David knew that he was declaring the restored prominence of worship. His installation of the ark using worship with singers, musicians, and apparently dancers was not just a spectacle. David was ushering in God's presence and ushering in a new direction for the nation. Here's our lesson. As we reflect on today's lesson, we need to remember that whether we are worshiping God in the church, building, or in our home, we should respond to God with expressions of praise and gratitude for who God is in our lives, for God's power in the universe, and for what He has done for us. In Jesus Christ, God has fulfilled the promise of the Ark of the Covenant. In Him, God has made His abode with humanity and brought to earth the divinity that enables us to offer true worship and praise. Thank you so much for listening and subscribing to iLightness. Heavenly Father, fill our hearts with what we truly desire, for who we truly seek is you.